Hello. In this screencast, I want to talk about how we can take um, an analytic expression for uh, the excess Gibbs free energy and use that to obtain analytic expressions for uh, the activity coefficients of our components in our mixture. Um, and so we'll consider two options. So we'll look at a binary system, so we'll have two options. In general, though, option one is the route that'll be applicable for you know multi-component multi systems in which you have more than two components. Option two will be specific to our uh, binary system case. Okay. And I'm going to work with uh, the simple two suffix Margulies equation for our binary system, just out of simplicity, you know, as we record this video. Um, but the methodology that we'll show is, you know, broadly applicable. Okay. And so I'm going to start with the two suffix Margulies equation, in which GE over RT is equal to a my model constant times x1 x2, the mole fractions of each component. Okay. Now the key to get gamma is remember that my partial molar excess Gibbs free energy, so using the notation of my of the book, the partial molar excess Gibbs free energy of component I in my mixture is equivalent to RT log gamma I. Okay, So log gamma I is related to my partial molar excess Gibbs free energy. Okay, Or if I bring the RT over here to write it in dimensionless form, I have the g bar i e over rt is equal to log gamma i. So therefore, by definition of a partial molar property, I have the log gamma i is going to be equal to the differential of, so this would be um, differential of my dimensionless extensive Gibbs free energy. So this would be n g e over rt. It's in GE because I need my extensive excess Gibbs free energy with respect to Ni holding everything else constant. Okay, so this will be our what I'll call option one. This will be the general strategy for um, getting log gamma i from GE. Okay, option two, we'll look at our simplified expression for. Um, the case of binary systems. Okay, and so let me go ahead and I'm going to label this option one. All right. Okay, so option one, which is true in general, is that log gamma i, I just use our definition of um, partial molar um, excess Gibbs free energy. All right, so how do I go about doing that? So in this case, this would correspond to log gamma um, i. Well, and let's just say we're working on component one, right? Log gamma one would be equal to the differential of N G E over R T with respect to N one at constant T P and N two. Okay. So how would I go about evaluating this differential? Well, in order to evaluate this differential, I need to have an expression for G E as a function of n1. Okay, so how I'm going to have to do that, right, is I go back to my GE model. So I have GE over RT is equal to a x1 x2, right? I have x1 and x2, right? What I need it to be a function of is n1. So what I need to do then is I need to substitute in for x1 and x2 my definition of my mole frac in terms of moles. Okay, um, and you know, as a note up here, right? This is n. This is n total. So what I need to do, okay, is so I'll call this say step one. Okay, is I need to substitute in that x one is equal to n one over n one plus n two. Okay, and just for completeness, that's equivalent to n one over n. Okay, we'll see if we can cancel any terms. X two is going to be equal to n two over n1 plus n2, which is for completeness, that's equal to n2 over n, okay? Um, and so if I plug that in, okay, I can rewrite GE, okay, this will be A, and then I'll have x1 is n1 over n1 plus n2, and this could be times n2 divided by n1 plus n2, so this would be equal to a n1 and 2 divided by n1 plus n2 squared. 
squared. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's uh, my expression for my molar extensive Gibbs free energy in terms of moles instead of mole fracs. When I look at the differential, I actually need uh, extensive G. So I'm going to multiply that by N. Okay, so step two would be what I actually need is N times GE over RT. Okay, so N, that'll be N1 plus N2 times A N1 and 2 over N1 plus N2 squared. Okay, so I can cancel one of those N1 plus N2 terms. And I'm left with A N1 N2 divided by N1 plus N2. Okay, cool. All right, so now I can go back to my differential. Okay, so log gamma 1, again, is going to be the differential of N G E over R T and I'm going to differentiate that with respect to the moles of species 1 holding everything else constant. Okay, oh, so that's that N J. You can just make that N2. Okay, so okay, I can plug in, oh, see my big handwriting, this is taking a long time. Okay, so log gamma 1 then would be, okay, the differential of, okay, so our expression for extensive G, all right, is here. So this would be A, N1, N2, divided by N1 plus N2. Differential of that with respect to N1, okay, and T, P, and then j are being held constant. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now it's just a matter of doing it. Okay. So now as we do it, um, oh, n j again. Remember, n two the moles of species two is constant. Okay. And a is constant. So actually, let me go ahead and let's factor out the a. Actually, I can factor out a n two. A n two. And then I have the differential of um, N1 divided by N1 plus N2 with respect to N1. All right, and I'm just going to say a constant N2, right? TP and N2. All right, so now we need to go and differentiate this animal. So log gamma 1 then is equal to A N2. Okay, so if I remember my uh, rules of differentiation, so I need to differentiate N1 over N1 um, and 2. So it should be what? VU prime minus UV prime over V squared, I think. So uh, V um, U prime, so differential of N1 with respect to N was just 1, minus U, which is N1, times V prime, okay? Well, uh, v prime, so it's n1 plus n2, okay, so differential of n1 is 1, n2 is, is 0. All over uh, v squared, which would be n1 plus n2 squared. Alright, so if I haven't messed anything up, so now I have, um, well actually this is n1 minus n1, so that would cancel. And so now I have A uh, and 2. And looking at the inside, okay, this is uh, N2. And at the bottom, this is N1 plus N2. I'm just going to write that as N squared for simplicity. Okay, cool. So log gamma 1 then would be A um, times n2 squared over n squared, okay, or n2 over n is just x2. So that would tell me then that log gamma 1 would be equal to a times x2 squared. Cool. Then if you want to do the same thing for log gamma 2, 
you would have to repeat this procedure, but now look at component two. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and if I'm not mistaken, what you should get is that if you were to go through the exercise for log gamma two, you should just get that log gamma two is equal to a times x1 squared. Okay, and you know this makes sense because I know that in the limit that x1 goes to one, I have an ideal system. So gamma one should be one, log gamma should be zero. So the limit that x1 goes to one is the limit that x2 goes to zero, right? So I'll get the the correct limiting uh, behavior. Okay, cool. So in order to get log gamma two, you would have to repeat the exercise. All right, if you had a multi-component system, you'd go through uh, this sort of exercise for everything. Okay. Now option two only works for the case of a binary system. Okay, and I'm gonna cheat. And how I'm gonna cheat is I'm gonna go back to, these are our type notes from chapter nine. And remember that we worked up simplified expressions uh, to get our partial molar uh, properties. Okay, and so if I wanted, so f bar one would be some arbitrary thermodynamic uh, state function. So this could be say our dimensionless uh, molar excess Gibbs free energy, could be f. And so if I shoot down here, right? So I could have that g bar one excess, okay, over rt, which is log gamma one, would be equal to, looking at this expression, my expression for GE over RT plus X2 times the differential of GE over RT and with respect to X1. Okay. So this would be our simplified expression that only works for binary systems. Uh, and we had a screencast where we derived this back in chapter nine and it was also in those chapter nine notes. So for binary system, you know, we you can work out simplified expressions. Uh, and so let's see, if we were to do this, um, what I need then is in order to evaluate this, I need GE over RT as a function of X1. So GE over RT again is A times X1, X2. So that'd be A times X1 x2 is just one minus x1. So this would be a times x1 minus x1 squared. All right, so uh, differential then of GE over RT with respect to x1 would be uh, what? Uh, that will be uh, a is constant, a times so differential of x1 with respect to x1 would just be one. Um, differential of negative x1 squared would be a minus two x1. So if I put it all together then, I should get the log gamma one is equal to GE over RT. That is gonna be my um, A, and we'll use x1, um, x2, plus x2 times A, one minus two x one. Okay, so if we expand, it's a x one x two uh, plus. And actually, let's write down the next line. So we have a x one x two uh, plus a. This would be x two minus two um, x one x two. This would be equal to a x1 x2 plus a x2 minus 2 a x1 x2. All right, so a x1 x2 minus 2 a x1 x2. So this would be um, a x2 minus a x1 x2. How do we want to play with this? So if I, how do I, well, um, so, you know, if I, I'm not gonna call it cheating, but I remember we found that log gamma one was equal to A 
um, x2 squared, let's go ahead here and let's replace x1 with 1 minus x2. Okay, so I'm going to write this as ax2 minus a 1 minus x2 uh, times x2. Okay, so I guess it's cheating a little because I know the answer, but I'm going to, oh, that's the bottom of the paper. Uh, so let's do, I need to add a new page. Okay, so picking up there, I have a x2 minus a uh, oh. uh, a. So let's do get the minus sign. So I'm distributing the a first, um, and then I'll have to multiply it by x2. So this would be a uh, minus a x2. times x2, so it would be ax2 minus, um, so here I have ax2 minus ax2 squared, oi, so ax2 minus ax2 plus a x2 squared, those cancel, and we're left then with log gamma 1 is equal to a x2 squared. All right, so you get exactly the same result. And if I want an expression for gamma 2, all right, I could go back up here, all right, and we have an expression for component 2. Okay, so those would be our two strategies for getting uh, expressions for log gamma from GE. Okay, option two um, is going to be applicable um, only for binary systems where we can use those simplified expressions. And we call them simplified because you know, they deal with mole fractions rather than moles. So they're a little more straightforward. We can actually use um, our analytic expressions for GE. Um, where option one right, is going to be the more general route where we need to take our GE expression, replace mole fractions with moles, and then ultimately multiply by n to make it extensive, um, and then we can differentiate, and then typically back substitute in expressions for mole fractions, because we want expressions for gammas uh, with mole fractions. Um, but there you have it.